Hey guys! Today I am getting my makeup done by a Thai makeup artist, Barbara Beer, and he's gonna be doing his signature glass skin makeup on me. Barbara Beer is a famous Thai makeup artist that has gone viral for his amazing glass skin makeup techniques. He can transform acne skin into beautiful, flawless glass skin. Today he's gonna to be sharing some of his best kept makeup secrets with us, so you're in for a treat. What tie up your skin? A little bit oily T-zone, but then dry oh, everywhere. Okay. Beer starts off with cleansing my skin so that he has a nice clean base to work on. No, but I've been dying to. I was like, oh, when I go to Thailand next, I want to get my makeup done because I love the Thai style and your style is not too thick and heavy. And so I've been following you for a while. And so when I was invited to your workshop, I was like, oh, he's coming to see <laughs> I need to reach out. Next, he sprays on a generous amount of this Zhongsei Mool Hydrating Mist. This spray is good for sensitive skin, it's super hydrating and you need to make sure that it's absorbed into the skin so it should look dewy but not feel sticky. Then he applies a gel cream moisturizer. This one is one that he's formulating and developing. To me, it kind of feels similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, except Beer said that this one that he's working on can be used on sensitive skins. He uses the same flat brush to spread out the moisturizer onto my skin. Then he switches to a buffing brush to blend and buff it in. Next, he applies sunscreen. This one is the Supergoop Play Everyday Lotion Sunscreen. He says that this product doesn't leave a white cast. And to make sure to apply an even layer, something that's not too thick or thin. Again, he spreads it across the skin with a flat brush and then buffs it. He then moves on to color correcting using a MAC cream palette. For this, he's just neutralizing any discoloration under my eyes, near my nostrils where there's a little bit of redness. And the trick here is to only use a very thin layer of product. The goal is just to cancel out the discoloration, not to completely cover the area. This will help to even out my complexion and he won't need to apply as much foundation later on. Speaking of foundation, he is going to be using the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. This is a beautiful foundation if you guys haven't tried it. It's very lightweight yet buildable and it doesn't oxidize on the skin. A trick Beer shared with me is that he likes to spread the foundation out on his palette first. This helps the foundation to get tacky and when he applies it, it will stick to the skin better. As for how he likes to apply it, he uses the flat brush to spread the foundation out on my skin. Then he goes in with a slightly damp sponge to bounce and press it into my skin. For this, he will apply thin layers of foundation until he builds up enough coverage. Next, he applies an hourglass concealer just under my eyes and around my nose. Then he goes in with a cream contour. This one is from Patrick Ta. And he just applies it on the sides of my face to help define my cheekbones. Also, he blends a little bit around my hairline to create the illusion of a smaller forehead. Next, he's going in with a cream blusher, again from Patrick Ta. This is applied onto my cheeks and it's kind of overlapping the contoured area a little bit so that the two colors blend seamlessly. Next, Beer is going to apply a highlighter from Rare Beauty. This will give my complexion some glow and he'll use it to highlight my cheekbones. Now I noticed he opted for a powder product and I asked him why. He said that he tends to avoid using liquid highlighters because it can melt the foundation and affect the base. He also mentioned that you should avoid liquid highlighters, especially if you have larger pores because sometimes the glitter particles might get into the pores and make the pore seem larger than it is. So it's best to stick with powder highlighters as it works better on most skin types. Ooh la la, check out my glowy skin. I'm starting to see that glass skin look now. 
Beer now locks in the makeup base using a Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder. It is a very light layer and I just want to quickly mention that this base, even though he's done so many layers, it doesn't feel like I have anything on my skin. I'm so surprised because usually even when I do like a full glam, I can feel that I have makeup on but when Beer applies it, it feels like nothing. Oh so comfortable. Now that my base is looking flawless, Beer is going to start on my eyes. He's using one of my favorite palettes. This is the Pillow Talk eyeshadow palette from Charlotte Tilbury. He applies the matte pinky shade on my whole lid and blends it upwards. This will create a soft wash of color. Next, he uses the darker matte shade to add depth to the outer corner of my eyes. He's just quickly cleaning up any fallout under my eye before powdering it again. And then he moves on to tight lining my waterline with a pencil liner. I really like this trick he's using of using the handle of a makeup brush to lift the lid. This is a great trick for makeup artists because it ensures that the eyeshadow doesn't get smudged. Usually people would use their fingers to lift up the lid, but this brush trick is a game changer. Now to soften up that liner, he blends a little bit of brown eyeshadow to diffuse it. Okay, now back to eyeshadow, he's gonna work on my lower lash line. So he's blending that same pinky shade underneath and diffusing it out to create this soft, smoky look. This is what my eyes are looking like. B is now going to add in some highlighter onto the inner corners. He actually wet his brush first with some setting spray before dipping it into the highlighter shade. This is to increase the intensity and ooh la la, look at that pop. He's also gonna add a tiny bit under my lower lash line. Now, since my lashes are already permed, he doesn't need to curl them, but he does go in with mascara. I think this is a Japanese brand he's using. When he's applying it, he uses the spatula brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills to help him separate and apply an even coat of mascara. This is another good trick to help prevent mascara from smudging onto your lid. He then applies mascara to my lower lashes. Now for brows. Bia uses a brown mascara first to color in my hair as well as brush them up. This is actually a lash mascara, not a brow mascara. So I think it's kind of like adding a little bit of volume and length as well. Then he goes in with a brown shadow to extend my tail and fill in any gaps in the body of the brow. Now usually when I get my makeup done, makeup artists usually go in with shadow first before mascara. So it was interesting that Bia was doing it the other way around but I really like the results so I think I'm gonna start doing this he then finishes up my brows with a little bit of hair wax just a tiny light coat this is to hold the brow hairs up he mentioned that he only uses this wax on certain people who have more stubborn hairs or thicker hairs and he applies a very light layer just on the tips of the hair you don't want to apply too much because it'll smudge the color alrighty my brows are looking full and lifted Bia is going to quickly apply a natural pair of falsies just to add a little bit more oomph to my eyes. Then we need a little bit more sparkle. He's using the Stila Glitter on the inner corner of my eyes for that extra glam dimension. Oh my god, the makeup is looking so good, but Beer is not done yet. He's going to contour my nose now. He told me he usually uses either cream or powder products, not both, because if you use both, it makes the nose contour look more prominent. And when people look at the makeup, their eyes are drawn to the nose. So that's why he prefers to have a more natural nose contour so that the eye makeup pops and is the main focal point. Now he's applying powder to my T-zone over the areas that get a little bit more oily throughout the day. And then we're just gonna switch up and do hair next. He's got an awesome hairstylist on his team who's going to give me some glam curls. And whilst he's doing that, Beer puts on some lip balm to save my crusty dry lips so that it can come back to life before he applies my lipstick.
Now that my hair is looking fab, Beer is going to go in with a nude color lipstick. He's using a brush to fill in my lips and slightly overline them a little bit to give me a fuller pout. And then he finishes up my lips with a gloss. All I need now is a final touch of blush and a little bit of hairspray to hold everything in place. Voila, this is the final look. I am so ready to get married again or renew my vows. I absolutely love this makeup, guys. It's fresh, it's glam, but not overly done. On camera, it looks great, but I also wish you guys can see it in real life because it's not thick and cakey at all. The base is so natural, it feels so comfortable. Big thanks to Beer for sharing his makeup secrets with us today. If you want to learn more pro makeup tricks, click the video on screen and don't forget to subscribe. I'll speak to you guys next time. Bye!